Hi everybody, this is Davido from Teacher Success Coach. I want to talk about um, teachers connecting with students on an academic level and, a, and on an emotional level. As educators, in order to support our students effectively, I do believe that we need to connect with them on an academic level and on an emotional level. However, we should also be very mindful as to how we are making those connections. Right? When I say that, I mean that some teachers try to connect with students on an emotional level because they want to, they're actually um, blurring the boundaries. By that I mean, they want to be like a real friend to these students. We cannot be real friends to our students. We need to make them know that we are here to support them and we connect with them as much as we can. However, they are not our friends. And I think that's where the line becomes blur. A lot of the young teachers are forgetting that these students are not your friend. You are the adult pair. So therefore you need to set boundaries and you need to make the students know that you are the adults. At the same time, being friendly with them, but not being their friend. There's a difference because I've seen it so many times when teachers are being the student's friend. So they become so friendly with the students that they're blurring the boundaries. Yes, you are connecting with them but they are not your friend. You are friendly to them, but they're not your friend. They need to know that when you are saying, when you say no, it's no. And they need to remember that you are the teacher. That is happening in so many schools that I go to, especially with the young teachers. Because they might be 27, 28, they're forgetting that their role is that of a teacher and a guidance. They're supposed to be guiding the student. The students are not your friend. Okay, you're teaching year 12 and year 13 and they're 18, right? Some of them are 18 years old. Some of them are, might be 19 year old, but they're not your friend. And teachers, you need to be aware of that because the line could become very blur and then there's a number of issues there. I also see one of the issues, the safeguarding issue as well. And there's sometimes you need to also be aware of when the students don't want you in their space because you're becoming too friendly with them. You know, they're actually with their peers. They might be doing something on um, Instagram. They might be doing something on, it could also be, they could also be doing something what's on WhatsApp. They might be doing something on the, um, on the internet, they might be doing something on the, um, what is it called? Oh my goodness, my brain's gone blank. They might be doing something on the, on the, anyway, anything they could be doing, right? It's not your business to want to know everything. What are you doing, right? They might be doing something on the email. I was trying to remember email. They might be doing something on the email. It's not your business to want to know what they're doing. Yes, you want to be friendly, but there's sometimes you need to read the room. You need to see when the students don't want you around them. It's like the same way when we as parents, when our children don't want us in their space. That doesn't mean that they don't really care, but there's sometimes they don't want your connection. In the same way, teachers, when students don't want your connection, you need to be aware of that. Stop pushing yourself onto them because that causes issue, right? Because when they finish that, they actually begin to disrespect you. Oh, the same things you, oh, miss, why are you always in my space? I've seen it so many times. You do not want your students to disrespect you, right? You want to be friendly with them. You want to be supporting them emotionally. You want to connect with them. You want to connect with them academically, but at the same time, you need to know boundaries. And too often, students are disrespecting teachers, especially the young ones, because they have no boundaries. They feel because they're young, because they're you know, under 30, and the students are 19, they feel it's okay to connect on those kind of bases. No, it's not. Because listen to how the students are talking to you. They're beginning to disrespect you. 
So educators, especially the young teachers, the NQT and the ECT teachers, be aware of your role in the school. You are not the student's friend. You are friendly to them. There's a difference. You are friendly to them, but you are not their friends. Students are very clear in terms of my boundaries. Yes, I hear them calling me Eno, Eno, Eno. That's fine. You can call me Eno. That's no problem. But at the same time, you know boundaries. Because when I say to you guys, have you done my work? You cannot disrespect me. Because I am not, as I say to students, or oh, one of them said to me on Friday, Miss, we have we locked in. No, no, no. You and I not locked in. So don't come to me with this jargon. Right? I don't do jargon. We're not locked in. You're beginning to understand the subject. I don't want to fist bump me and say we locked in. No, 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 no. None of that. I am your teacher. My role is to guide you. My role is to support you. You know, we are friendly. I am friendly towards you, but you are not my friend and I'm not your friend. They are boundaries. And that's something the young teachers must start instilling in their students and also in themselves because the boundaries, the lines become blur and then you have the disrespecting. I've got a number of ex-students in all the schools I've taught in, and I'm quite connected with this, with my ex-students who are, you know, six formers, year 12 and year 13. So from time to time, you know, they connect with me on, on um, Facebook, on Instagram, and, you know, some of those platforms. And they're saying to me, Miss, this teacher, I don't understand why she's still, you know, she, she thinks that we're friends and she talking to us about another teacher. You don't do that with your students. You don't do that. They're your students. How dare you? And students are now coming and saying to me, Miss, I don't understand why they're talking to me like this, why they feel that I want to be their friend, etc. And I have a lot of students in different schools telling me this. And I'm saying to you, educators, especially, I'm not saying the older students, the older teachers don't do it, but especially the ECT and the NQT teachers, these students might be, you know, young as you, you might be connecting on music, you might be connecting on fashion, you might be connecting on books, etc. I hear you, but you need to have boundaries. They need to know that you are the teacher. You are not the friend. You're friendly to them, but you're not the friend. It's the same thing when parents, you know, try to dress as the children. They're blurring the line. So when the, should, when the children start disrespecting them, they wonder why the children are disrespecting them. Because you've gi you are giving them the weapon to disrespect you. You need to carry yourself differently, right? So that's what I'm putting out there for educators and parents. You need to know boundaries. And when boundaries are become blur, then we have the issues. And that's why we have a lot of these children are disrespecting because we are not setting boundaries. I'm not saying that you've got to be real strict, but you need to set boundaries because they need to know, you know, who are the authority figure. They need to know who is the parent, who is the child, and who is the teacher, who is the student. They need to know that. My students know it very, very clear because they know when they're ready to come and fist bump. I'm not into that. No, no, no. Yes, we could have conversation, we could have a laugh, you could show me your, your dress you're going to buy for the prom, etc., etc. We could discuss the length, all of those things, but you know the boundaries. And I could say students are not going to disrespect me because I'm going to make them know that and they know from the word go that, you know, where the lines and the boundaries are. Anyway female educators, not even female educators, educators per se, you guys need to be aware. And parents, your children are your children. I'm not saying that you cannot be, you know, pal with your children, etc. But you also need to remember that you are the parents. Right? And stop trying to dress as your, ch your child. You know, so that the child don't see any boundaries between you. And then the child start disrespecting you. I've seen it so many times in my parental classes. I see it so many times in my classroom, you know, in the schools I've been in where children are disrespecting the, the students, you know, 
and vice versa in my parental classes where children are disrespecting the parents because we give them the ammunition to do that because we have not taken on our responsibility as a parent. You take on the responsibility as a friend. Yes, you could be friendly to your child, but you need to draw the line. Anyway, take care, stay blessed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I have a show called Celebrating Motherhood. And I said motherhood doesn't necessarily have to be your biological child. It could be a child that you see from the time the child was born and the child see you as a mother. So we are celebrating that and we need to remember the importance of motherhood. They come, how important they are. They come first, they come second, they come last. And without women, there is no world. And you guys know that in order for things to function, you need the woman. As long as the woman is happy, the whole world is happy. Right? So tomorrow on my show, 7 to 9, 7, 8, 9, I think it's 7 to 9, we are going to be celebrating motherhood, the beauty of motherhood, and appreciating the roles that they play. It's not just for tomorrow. It should be something that we're consciously aware of all the time. So if a woman decides to stay at home to look after her children and her husband or partner, that's her choice. That should not be demeaned because looking after the future generation is one of the most powerful job. And any mother or any woman who able to do that, I take my hat out to them because I know me, I'm not able to do that because I find staying at home and doing all those things tiring. And then you have women who are doing the triple shift and they keep on throwing it all over the place, reminding people, providing the emotional support, providing the support as the, their mother, and then the work support. So she's doing the triple shift. As Anne Oakley, a feminist, said, women and the triple shift. Okay, yes, yeah, she was. she's a feminist, but at the same time, when we actually think about it, it is true, we're doing triple shift. The unpaid work and the paid work. We need to be acknowledged for that. So if a woman decides to stay at home and do the unpaid work, I admire her for that. But I'm saying that's not something I want to do. I don't mind it doing the triple shift. It's tiring as hell, but I just don't want to do the one where just staying at home. But it's a situation where we need to appreciate women for that. We should not be, should never be condemning. And we should never be belittling a woman if she chooses to stay home. That's her choice. Society don't give us women many choices. So if we're able to have that choice, exercise will right to, to celebrate that choice. So tomorrow my show is going to be from 7 to 10. Oh, sorry, 7 to 9 rather. And I've got 10 fantastic powerful women on the show from across the world where we'll be talking about how we celebrate womanhood or motherhood how we celebrate it what do we do to celebrate it and you know guys you need to remember to celebrate you don't wait for anyone else to celebrate you man you need to celebrate yourself as usual I usually buy my flowers etc today I decide to go and buy some potted plants not just flowers, potted plants as well. So I went out and I bought myself two fantastic potted plants because I'm celebrating me. I'm not waiting for anybody to buy me flowers. I need to celebrate me. I need to tell people what I expect. And in order for me to know, for them to know what I expect, I need to show myself what I expect. So they in turn see my expectation. Hello, queens. We need to make sure that we show the world what we expect. Anyway, guys, take care, stay blessed. Have a fantastic evening, night, morning, where you are. And I'll see you guys tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock UK time. If you guys want to join me, join me on my Facebook, on my Facebook, um, yeah, my Facebook profile. The show would be um, Zoom straight into Facebook, and then it's going to be on my YouTube channel. Anyway, guys, take care, stay blessed. Love you guys. Bye-bye.